Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB foundation level sample paper discussions where we talk about the tips, tricks and time management related to the certification. As a part of this particular tutorial, we're getting started with the next set that is set C and we shall be looking at fresh bunch of 40 questions from the ISTQB again and shall be looking forward to understand the more tips and tricks related to the variety of questions which sometimes can also appear uh, other than the ones we have discussed so far but uh, right from here I think most of the things are pretty much already clear so we shall be saving our time and not repeating the same thing again and again however if you find something very unique we will look forward to discuss the same to get started the very first question coming up from the chapter one that is fundamental of testing is right here and the question says which of the following is a typical test objective now again the test objectives have been listed in the syllabus very straightforward this is a k1 level question so there's nothing to worry about nothing to think about nothing to discuss no justification required but yet something important to read before you conclude with the right answer so uh, this topic is more of like context driven. So let's go with the option and let's understand what are they providing you with the right answer. So there are options as option A. Option A says uh, validating that documented requirements are met. Okay, that's a little tricky option. Validating that the documented requirements are met. Two important things uh, when we talk about validating, it's more about executing test cases. However, verification is more about statically going through the documentation and reviewing them to make sure that they are correct. Now, making sure uh, documented requirements are met is a little tricky word because I would say, hey, documented requirements is something which we are trying to meet in the implementation. And uh, that's uh, something important to worry about. But uh, I think that's not something what we really take care of here, right? Because verification is what deals with necessary uh, steps to be taken to make sure that the documentation information is correct. The word met is a li little tricky here because uh, that's going to talk about that have we developed this into the application or not. So validating whether the documented requirements are met is a little tricky but however for now we'll keep this aside and then we'll come back and discuss. Let's go to option B. Option B says uh, causing failures and identifying defects Causing failure and identifying defect is certainly one of our key objectives because uh, when it comes to testing, it's more about dynamic testing. However, we do have static testing in place, but default we think about, yes, it is one of our objective to run the test cases, cause as many failures as possible and report the defects so that uh, they can be corrected. If I go to option C, option C says initiating errors and identifying root causes. Initiating error is a wrong keyword. We are not as a test engineer who are responsible to initiate the error. We only conduct failures by running our test cases or identify defects directly in the work products, which are documentation. So we do not initiate any kind of errors and do not talk about uh, debugging them with root causes, etc. And option D says uh, verifying the test object meets user expectation, verifying and test object are two contradicting things because verification deals with static objects like uh, static work products whereas test object as per the syllabus is a executable piece of code in the application or system under test. So that's where verification is all about static testing and test object is all about dynamic testing. So it's a contradicting statement and thus cannot be picked up as one of the right answer. Now we're left with option A and B and let's see what exactly we have the best here. So if I compare option A and B, I would see B is more straightforward, whereas A is a little tricky because validating that documented requirements are met is not one of our objective listed there. So I would say as per the syllabus, this is not one of the typical objectives which are listed there because nowhere in the syllabus they told that uh, our job is to make sure that we meet. However, in general, as a test engineer, we know that our job is to make sure that all the requirements which are documented anywhere is met. But I think uh, talking about uh, reviewing is more of verification, not validation. And even other way around, as per the syllabus, uh, is not relevant. So I would like to conclude here. However, this option is very tricky. I agree to that. But uh, to conclude with, the right answer for this particular question is, B 
Causing failures and identifying defect is one of the typical test objective, whereas validating that documented requirements are met is not a listed objective. And this question goes as per the syllabus, not what we understand or what we know about the testing. Of course, A also is correct in that context, but as per the syllabus, it is wrong. So let's not debate on that. Let's move on to the next question. And the next question we have is question number two. two. And uh, it says, which of the following statement best describes the differences between testing and debugging? I think, again, uh, just to recall quickly, we had a very clear cut definition to testing and debugging, where testing said that we identify defects and debugging was more responsible to analyze these failures, get into the root cause analysis and fixing these failures. So let's look at the options very straightforward. Option A says uh, testing causes failure while debugging fixes failures. Um, a little tricky again. Uh, so I think this entire set is going to be a lot of trickiness. So testing finds failure, that's correct, but debugging does not fix the failure. Fix Failure is an approach. So if you go by the keywords, what we discussed there, error, bug, defect, fault, failure. Failure is just an approach. It's not an anomaly. It's not a problem. It's just an approach to find the defect. And we fix the defect, not the failure. So you know each word matters to us in order to conclude with the right answer. Okay, let's go with option B. Option B says testing is a negative activity while debugging is a positive activity. <laughs> I think uh, this is what many of us would say, yeah, this is what the people think about testing that we are negative in nature, we are destructive in nature. But I always say we are not destructive because testing has no possible option to destroy a code. It's already broken. We just let them know. Okay, that's the only thing what we do. So it's not that a tester can break the code. It's not that a tester can destroy the code. It's not a piece of code which can work, right? But point being made is, uh, testing is not a negative activity and it's not that development is positive. However, I can still support it saying that development is more of constructive activity. It is solution oriented. It builds the product. But in case there are any kind of uh, misimplementations, anomalies, then testing finds those missing gaps. That's it. It's not a negative activity, so let's not conclude that way. Let's go to option C, and option C says, uh, testing determines that defect exists while debugging removes defects. Now, this goes uh, right in the you know, co collaboration with the option A. Here, testing is finding the defects, that the defect exists, uh, confirms that, and uh, debugging is something which is going to fix the defects uh, rather than fixing the failure, right? So that makes it a little clear. So C seems a little good. But let's go with option D. Option D says testing finds the cause of defects while debugging fixes the cause of defect. So testing find the cause of defect? Not at all, because that's what is uh, debugging going to do. Debugging has three major options or three major activities, analyzing the failure, uh, getting into the root cause and fixing the failure. Uh, that's sorry, fixing the defects. So that is where it works and that's how it basically goes in. So put together, I think we can very well conclude. The right answer to this particular question is C, that is testing determines that defects exist while debugging removes the defects. And that's how it basically goes uh, to the right definition to testing versus debugging. Let's move on to the next question. And the next question we have is question number three. And uh, the question number three is talking about the absence of defect fallacy is one of the principle of testing, okay? And which of the following is an example of addressing this principle in practice? I think we have already covered this on tutorial, so we should be very much clear that there are seven standard principles and each one of them have something specific in their definition. So let's go ahead and read the option straightforward. Option A says explaining that it is not possible for testing to show the absence of defects. I think we have a dedicated principle for it, which is the first principle and it says, uh, testing shows presence of defects, but not their absence. Whereas absence of defect is a fallacy is the last principle which talks about meeting the requirements, right? So this is not the principle which you're talking about. B says uh, supporting the end user to perform acceptance testing. Uh, supporting the end user to perform uh, acceptance testing uh, again, that's a little tricky, but uh, let's cross check with other options that is C and D. Option C says ensuring that no implementation defects remain in the delivered system, which is contradicting with the principle one. 
Principle one clearly says that a testing source presence of defects, but not their absence. So I cannot assure you at any point of time that there are no defects in the system, which what the option C is trying to say. If I go to option D, option D says uh, modifying test that cause no failure to ensure few defects remain. Uh, this is a perfect example of tests wear out because that is where we look forward to uh, renew our test cases, revise our test cases over a period of time, but uh, however requires a little attention to make sure that if these test cases are no longer beneficial, we should remove them and add some new test cases. So yeah, this can be correlated to that of uh, the pesticide paradox, which is tests wear out, but not something related to absence of error fallacy. So now let's go back to option B and read it again that supporting the end users to perform acceptance testing is a little uh, tricky statement, but yet making sense because by supporting the end users to perform acceptance testing, it should be possible to validate that the system meets the user needs and expectations. And I think uh, that's what the objective of this particular principle is all about, that making sure that the defects are, uh, sorry, the, uh, just finding and fixing defect does not help if at the end the system built is useless to the customer. So if acceptance testing is performed, then acceptance testing can give me that confirmation that the business requirements were met and the customer is really uh, having the product what they really wanted. So I think in that context, uh, that makes a lot of sense and uh, put together, the right answer for this particular question is B, supporting the end users to perform acceptance testing is the right answer. Uh, just wanted to give you a clear cut understanding of what just happened. A simple thing that uh, this, to, to this particular set is going to have a lot of tricky statements and we have to deal with them in order to get a better confidence. But at points you may feel that, oh, this is not a right statement to pick it up as a right answer, but this is it, okay? Because as per the syllabus, it is written somewhere about the same, right? Or that's the reason I'm explaining you to make sure that you understand it well, right? So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.